You've just tuned in into the recording of one of the presentations that was part of our webinar on how to link journeys to business goals. In this specific presentation, you'll hear Jochen van der Veer, who is the CEO of a leading online journey management platform called Dedu, share how they use a bottom-up approach to derive goals based on journeys and how to use these journey-inspired goals to influence their high-level business objectives. Enjoy! So I brought in the bottom-up goal setting that we now see is being applied in many different companies. Not only is Florian sharing how he's doing it, but there's many teams that believe like, hey, to really flip the switch and say, we are customer centric, we're not only talking about it, we're not only thinking about it, we're actually doing it. You need to at least have a balance between how your customer goals are influencing your company goals. Now, top line metrics, revenue, customer satisfaction, expansion, growth, like everyone has them, right? Every business, every commercial business has at least a few of them. But what you want to do is look at how to make them relevant. So what I'm going to do, it is a bit meta, but this is like the, the closest thing to making it accurate on every level so that I don't say general things, but I make it super specific so everyone can follow is I'm going to bring it the way we are doing it and now seeing companies adopt bottom up from journey to opportunity to strategic opportunity to filter on annual goals and to bring their quarterly planning in a more balanced way making sure they are informed by the customer problems by the opportunities from the journeys so i'm going to piece that together um, while showing around how we at data actually are doing that um, and how we are changing it so if you have let's and i'm going to focus on the quarterly goals specifically because ultimately, like you want to make revenue and some of the annual goals, like Florian said, more recurring revenue or build a recurring revenue arm. If you're coming from, let's say, a hardware or more of a sales environment where that might not be something that is natural to your company. But having a quarterly focus for all your teams across your the journeys. Quick, quick uh, question, practical question. Yeah. Are you sharing slides right now? No, 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 no. Okay. Yet. People were confused in the chat. So no, no slides yeah. yet. Okay. Okay. No, no, no. If you want to see slides there, here we go. We're going to bring some slides. In, <laughs> yes, right? we do. Of course. Yeah, yeah, we do. We do. We do. Okay. So I will not go over like what they do is. If you want to know all about it, and I know a lot of you have data accounts or our customers are working with journey management using data as a software. Uh, if you want to know more, like shoot me a DM, happy to chat more on that. But what I'll do today is like, show you what's working with it, like when informing your strategic goals using your journeys. And the first thing, and now I'm sharing slides, <laughs> is everyone getting that? Yes. <laughs> uh, the strategic goals um, are coming from your journeys. But to do that, you first need to do one step. And I think Florian showed it already, but it might not be obvious. It's like turn your journeys into something that can produce opportunities. So I think that is the first innovation and we brought that to market a while back already said from these journeys, teams will find new insights. They have the data, but then they will define these opportunities. But I don't know, Florian, your, your title on the service design show said like managing hundreds of journeys, right? There are so many in most of the companies that we work at. You can't really compare one journey that is on a different level than another journey and this team doing it this way and an employee journey versus a customer journey. Like, how are you going to balance that? So what we are designing for is having that level playing field and we use the opportunity for that. It's an entity where you can connect your insights and your journeys, but also link it to goals. That's what I'm going to focus on. And whether you're coming from a product led business, a sales led business or a marketing led business, what I've seen is that opportunity is something everyone can embrace. It's like, okay, sure. We have an opportunity. <laughs> it is something we can address with the business. So, by naming it opportunities, it goes away from the traditional service design, saying like it's a problem statement. Maybe if you have design thinking as, as your backbone of the way you do this, but you actually turn it into an opportunity for your business. So from your journeys, and this is where the first step is, teams define opportunities. So in Daydo, for instance, our team, the core team is working on, let's say, I map a journey. It's the first experience you have when you land on Daydo. You're going to create a journey using our tool. So in that journey, there's a lot of problems or opportunities that we already have identified. 
But if we would only focus on these, I think this would not be a viable business because there's so much more to do. So from our journeys, we want our teams to be able to get those opportunities defined. I think that's the first step. So, and I'm going to do it like this. So I'm going to show you like from journey to opportunity and later I'll show you in data how it works. But the goal here is to really give a structure to the bottom up goal setting method that you can apply in any business because from the opportunity, and this is like a cross-functional team. So let's say the product team that's working on the mapping a journey experience in Daydo would define a bunch of these opportunities. But equally, um, people in sales that navigate the buying journey signal opportunities. Hey, people would benefit from a business case template. Hey, people would benefit from a little industry-specific playbook that they can pass along. That's also an opportunity. So we will make those opportunities on the same way so everyone can start comparing them. And what happens next is that from these opportunities, um, which team leads then put in as candidates for planning, and this happens on a quarterly cycle. I can show you a little bit on, on the planning cadence there. But the team leads, they are responsible for saying like, sure, we have a ton of opportunities, but if it was my guess, these are the five I want to go after. And they call them our candidates. So they submit these opportunities as strategic opportunities. And these opportunities are then piled up from all the different teams working on different journeys across our organization. So we have cross-functional teams, but we have land, we have use, and we have expand as three of the stages in the customer lifecycle. And we have teams attached to that. So what is important for an expansion um, opportunity might not be important for uh, landing a new customer, for instance, or for even you know, a new partnership, finding a strategic partner like Mark that we can work with to bring the knowledge further, right? That can also be an opportunity. So strategic opportunities are prioritized into um, one place. I'm going to show you how that works by our cross-functional leaders. It's a smaller group of people, each tied to the life cycle phases. And then what happens is interesting because like every other company, we have top-down annual goals. They are set by the executive leadership on an annual basis. And that acts as a filter. So we're not gonna show, hey, how are these goals then trickling down to quarterly planning and what are we gonna do this quarter? But we're actually using them to filter our strategic opportunities. So these opportunities come from the journeys. That means they are addressing some form of customer problem or something that goes really well that we wanna do more of, and they are turned into business opportunity. But then the annual goal filter helps us to say like, on a scale from zero to 100, like how important is this opportunity or getting us closer to achieving our company annual goals? And it turns out not every strategic opportunity is as important as all the others. And that together will define our quarterly goals. So from these strategic opportunities, obviously you have, in our case, we have like 40 candidates that we bring down to let's say half of that. So then we have 20 strategic opportunities for a quarter. That's still way too much. But with the annual goal filter, we try to cluster them. We try to bring them together. And in our case, it's our operations leader together with me that identifies the bigger themes and then turns these into goals. Now, what it means in practice, if you have OKRs in your company, I know many of us do, is that from these strategic opportunities, using the annual goal filter, you would define your objectives. These are your inspirational goals for the quarter. And then your key results, they can be obviously output metrics or outcome metrics, depending on the way that those goals are going to be addressed with the opportunities. So if you have OKRs, using your strategic opportunities with the annual goal as a filter to define your objectives for the quarter is a way that you can do this bottom up. Okay, so that's for the theory. Uh, and now maybe showing that in practice how it looks. So um, because this is public, I couldn't go into data itself to show you how it did uh, work. So I turned it into a version that is stripped from the actual data and the actual things that we're working on, but I'll give some examples along the way. But I'm gonna start bottom up. So in our case, um, let me just go to, we have three phases in our life cycle, right? Land use expand. 
So there's a lot of journeys that go into even a simple company like they do. So I'll, I'll take one, like mapping a journey. That's one of the core journeys that everyone goes through in the onboarding that everyone does on a day-to-day -day basis, on a week-to-week -week basis. It's like, this is the key for journey management. So in this journey, we know roughly what's going on. And again, the data is fake. The, the metrics are not here, like how many insights people are creating. It's not there. It's the metrics that you know are like fake metrics. But what you can see is that, let's say when I want to add an insight, we have a lot of opportunities or at least insights that can can help us define an opportunity so our teams are just working in a journey uncovering by researching by talking to users by analyzing the data uh, maybe uncovering a ux opportunity so by adding these opportunities and this is an opportunity right it's it's linked to the journey step or in this case uh, to adding an insight in the map journey uh, and they do helps you to create those links so i know this opportunity is here and it, it has um, one specific insight to it. I saw some questions in the chat, like we want to make the relation between what insights around UX problems here are actually um, relevant. So I can piece that together by linking them to it. So I can't merge similar entities. Okay, that's just, just one insight that adds to this. So now I've added this opportunity. I, I know that our teams and many journey teams are doing it like this, mapping a journey, finding the opportunities. But again, we have already like 33 journeys to manage in our little company. Florian has some more. <laughs> and I know of companies that have hundreds. So to make these opportunities consistent is one thing, but then to submit them as candidates is another. So the easiest way we do this is by adding a tag for, for a submission. Yeah, we have some operating procedures around this. So I'm calling this 23Q2 candidate. So what it then does is if we go one level up, and then I'll look at all these opportunities that have been submitted for Q2 candidates. And by the time we publish this, it might be Q3, I don't know. But anyway, it's, it's quarter by quarter. So here I would say, okay, so which of these journeys are actually Q2 candidates? Uh, and then still, I get a lot. But here I now see from all my journeys, the opportunities that I might want to take in. Can look at it from different angles, but let's say, okay, so they are spread across the journeys and a few stand out. So a few like this one is touching many journeys. I mean, the impact is large and this will help me do the first assessment. Like, okay, from which, which is in the top right quadrant, business value is high, customer value is high. Okay, cool. I can go on to the next step. So what our teams then do, and this requires obviously some meetings. I wouldn't say everything can be done asynchronously, that, that would be a myth. But having these opportunities would help me to, to hone in on what is really important, but then also specify which ones would be the strategic ones, or maybe we should merge a few together and bring that into a strategic opportunity. So back to the goal setting framework. So we saw a lot of opportunities come together and then cross-functional leaders come together to define these strategic opportunities. And I also know that this is just for Daedu, it's more, more relatively small, right? We're having 33 journeys and we're building a great company, but we're not the size of NCR. So this can be done on many levels. So maybe you want to do this on, on, let's say the customer experience or the employee experience, or even trinkle it down into a little bit more of a narrow part of your business and then roll it up. So there's a little layer in between, but I'm just taking the simplified version of it. So it's easy to follow. So strategic opportunities, um, let's say we had that like discussion, that meeting, then we use the strategic opportunity tag. It is actually a type of opportunity we've identified to narrow it down. So now I have a set of strategic opportunities that we all agree are the most important ones when we look at the customer experience that we want to tackle with our cross-functional leaders. Now, mind you, the next thing we want to do is still look at the business goals we have for this year. So which of these are actually going to move the needle the biggest? And that is the next step in, in this process where we take these opportunities that are now still linked to the journeys, right? If I would open any, I can still go back into what journey that stems from. Like, hey, this is coming from the sales roadmap. Okay, I know there are some things on it that I need to be mindful of, or it's coming from our ICP discovery journey. So I know what link, if I would go into that journey, I would be back on, in this case, the enterprise buying journey where people are booking the meeting. There we go. I'm back on this strategic opportunity and I know it's linked here. 
by doing it this way, what you're creating, and I think this is the key to doing this at scale, is you're not only doing your top level goals and connecting them to what ha happens in the journey, but you're actually linking them. You're actually linking them through the lens of opportunities. And I think by doing that, you can go top down and say, hey, let's trinkle down the strategic opportunities, make them into business objectives for a quarter, turn them into opportunities, and then link them to journeys. That's one way. But what I've just done is from your journeys, turn your opportunities into groups, cluster them, define the strategic ones. And what we then do, and this is, this is something we do in data specifically, but what we're also <laughs> sharing with our customers is that this is a journey that is actually happening. But you also want to make kind of roadmap or bridge journeys where we look at it from a strategic angle. And I think that is the last thing I want to share. So here we have the customer lifecycle, land use expand with all its journeys and its opportunities. But if I would look into, let's say, what we actually are doing for Q2, and again, I simplified this for today's presentation, we're creating a quarterly goal journey where um, we have a let's say management journey, land, activate, use, expand, covering the life cycle. And we only focus on the strategic opportunities. And again, our key results in this case would be like, you don't see metrics here, but we do have the metrics in Daedu, like our ARR metric, our activation rate, some of those. Um, and to give you an example, we know that one in four enterprise customers that starts in Daedu, our enterprise users, gets to their value moment, understanding how to piece this together, what I just did, one in four. We want to increase that. So to hit the ground running, we're going to bring in templates. We're going to bring in better onboarding experience, uh, different shaded onboarding. So everyone from a service designer to a manager has a different path. Like from a strategic opportunity, our teams will add their initiatives, which we call solutions, so that we know, hey, this product team is doing this, the marketing team is doing that all aligned against the strategic opportunity that is focusing on, let's say, the goal that we have defined for activation. So let's say doubling our activation rate in the next quarter. So as you can see, still, I'm using the same opportunity um, that is linked to my quarterly goal, which is more of a bridge journey for my goal setting. And it links back to the original journeys where it's coming from, where the insights are and what is actually happening in the customer experience. So I think by bringing it together, bottom up, your journeys will ultimately inform your goals. But I think that linking pin, the opportunity is holding people accountable and saying, hey, how are we progressing against that goal? Because ultimately when your um, journeys or your opportunities are gonna be impacted by the solution work you're doing, let's say this one goes live and it's done, whether you have it linked to your PM tools or it's actually something that you track in Daedu, ultimately you want to get some progress done. As you can see, now we are having one of the solutions completed to track back your goals, your opportunities to your goals. So let me leave it at that. I think that is the way journey teams can do this bottom up at scale. And to set this up, it's pretty easy. Obviously, you need to know a few tricks that I just had under my uh, my sleeve. But the way we do this at Daedu is just making our goal setting so effortless that we just need a few meetings. Let me just give you an overview of what that looks like. To do this every quarter and the rest is async and works in tandem. So it looks a little bit like this. Very high level, like for our three months. The insights, the grooming is happening continuously, reporting on goals every other week. And then the quarterly goal planning, the prep starts in month two, the lead focus and the commit starts in the week three, two and three. And then at the end of the quarter, I'll be presenting that together with our operations leader in the all hands on week four of the beginning or the end of the last quarter. So it's pretty sufficient and I've seen teams do a lot of good by doing it this way. Jochem just showed you the bottom up approach that you can use to link your journeys to business objectives. But there's also a top down approach. If you want to know how that works, click the video over here. In that video, you'll get a presentation and insight into how a multi-billion company makes sure that all their journeys are aligned with the key business objectives. Fascinating stuff. So click the video over here and I'll see you over there.